the archive ballad. I am a concept after the natural end of two objects. I am the failed practice of self-rule, a resource bent back more severely than the other moderns resonate or dogs and minds away from their masters. I am in pornography a person not effaced or expressive a single mood, the arbiter of no one change brought about in relation when mother is to daughter as a pressure inside the sorrow song event or museum piece implausible. I am relevant to the material breach as weapons of destruction are to the symptoms of my tongue and throat so united in a row as to stay the execution for a week. In my homecoming, is the future moving to register an inventory of experience I deform even as I deride what confines me to severed circumstance? <coughs> Piano wire of the last word said when it once led to ginger kissing any such son invisible to himself and fractious. Monologue for which there is no conclusion no uproar, no new guest amenities, no smile of the unforeseeable, no nurse to fill this rachitic prescription. Eroded resource for public support, prosthetic extension of the media, engineered to employ me in this real and storied time, together as single and multiple channels for the moving image when this is written in the dark, when simulacra to surveillance as the secret cause was to history in duplicate original domain and mind cure monument. <coughs> same unfounded sensation in sight, same tenuous advances from my departure point ether and its sinuous release to anesthetize the galaxy. The intelligentsia of Los Angeles, a cloverleaf, is anathema to the industry composed of citizens so obsolete as to think the elements of consensus and fit are an act of translation, or the willingness to listen that allows for the true resolve, how many of us online and in rank, when it all functions at lower best. Electros, electronic velocity to deepen capital's culture in the digital West, an onslaught by money demands and scientific compliance in metropoles where rape is committed every 54 minutes, and the new moons Caliban and Sycorax astronomers allege by radiation dark red into hydrocarbons of old in the history of the solar system. The sunlight concern was with fraught amalgams of attributes, dislocated birthplace, weightless silver for all the accounting exuberance. Animals, oblivious, stench of excrement in the world, armed with needles and fangs at the moon in the forests of the New England when savannas of Africa, as by any further reason for us to build a true kingdom of God, whose electorate's advice on lawful matters concerning witchcraft in courts of Boyer and Terminer convene no longer. Provided our brethren abide, suspended of collusion with the accusers and their families, joined in prison by accident to spur memory, fornication by assault, salary, firewood. Source or matrix of a prior illusion befitting the world now open to intimate apex on the horizon made present in objects rendered by mind over whereabouts. Frostbite, a menace along the breakers, I'm craving this lavender black of sundown in surfacing mounds of snow, and when we forego our soundness, formal draped or continuous as night figures along Richmond Avenue or Ashland. How we might get hard enough to follow orders of smarter, better fit, more masculine, the smell of animal feed, we who firefight by rack and pinion, 
by Mardi Gras bead. Was it already lost, always, first temper known to appear only in escape or distraction? What if long buried even as a half-hearted kindness? Newer measure to the ethics of a present unseen or unsteady as the headlong drop to the floor before government cameras pulled away to the crowd in a televised speech before the rally, a hundred thousand of us in epileptic intent are flagged to the forces, deployed in methods of fronting vertical threats no longer welcome to members of student council, no matter how far this goes, regardless of meetings we oppose until begged by our teacher, Mr. Miller, on his knees, signed, your friends who can't even with laws in our favor a chorus of weapons in skin-headed anthems androgynous. Homecoming for that underground encouragement whose purpose was to threaten with a counter-calculus of maw, blaze, and smothering ash. Field of material contentions and conflicts and dreams of radical equality, marked by the name of liberal assets, unleashing in patterns uncontrolled, so lawless, a brutal concentration of wealth, a surplus such magnitude of deprivation, ever thriving to be more dissatisfied or satisfied in a culture at odds, internal devoid of all patterns in civic life, neither tolerant democracy, nor the promise of a unified collective wager will survive its sway as the final arbiter of the social good, prepared all told to safeguard the borders of external threats to our security, lingua franca in which this is written, embody the moral bind, include us all. Return to the scene, posterior effect to cause what place is to the original, with an obedience whose compulsions appear identical to choice. To the degree that I can specify or generalize space, the more blurred or distinct becomes my feeling of corporeal subjectivity and sovereignty. The fate of indulging in fantasy may so lead to such mimetic incorporation of the animate in the inanimate and vice versa as for me to reconfigure the possibilities of my environments. And so with that, I'll read two new poems. Or why the assembly disbanded as before? Hosanna in the borderline cinder block warehouse, as much applause as possible to collapse inside an ambulance that now conveys the intravenous bags and bottle holder. 27 stones from here to the Idlewild, to the gun fields. It's a place you find automaton nurses who labor in gray green subterfuge in all over stripes, a round of punches to the lower jaw for my part in the main. So I get it now. I'm the chosen one for reassignment, face so altered as to beguile. This is enemy convenient a purview suitable to the very new cosmetic methods. Question is, the admin, diazepam, and other hypodermics, were they counteractive or now consistent with enough cases as to compel canvassers to anticipate first signs of panic, sleepwalker antecedents, tray tables in upright positions, crushed ice out of open mouth, air-conditioned ward redolent of superstores and tattoo shops, or was it morphine, sulfate, and protocols applied to disable the congenital twins? Here's the world news. To jump science prizes, wax candy lips in tone of flawless, if always accented sentence. The kind of talking from another world where my mother was Marlo Thomas and there were rival techniques contributed to the celebrity of my seven-sided disappearance? Or was that all my enuresis when I doubled in size as from her pocketbook, adorable but already diminishing? 
if in the brickyard, if in the chromium disclosure copyright, if in my signature all demise draw closer triangle bylaw some protein. Anvil and bellows. In all manners, Mr. Tourniquet, in toned attention turning to my treatment, many times ignored, many times identical to the carbonate castle, many times in tribal paint, unbridled scuttlebutt stargaze, releasing childhood, palsied, in germinal burst. Surface made of metal, Mrs. Skeleton, skeleton Key, it's a cruel copy tantamount to the emotion precinct, tantamount to the other story imprint, to the opposite self complete with pigment, actually, archaic catalog of chattel and usufruct, whose characters include Professor Blind Eye Turning, Sister Bulletproof Jacket, Reverend Dead Man's Gully, Mr. Secretary General of the Global Farm Security. Birth lines intersect here with the turnstile attorneys whose testimony pictograms a tight timetable into gossip and gainsay the evidence of animals so menaced by what surrounds these laws with mindful hand and fodder as to inaugurate the weightless stranger brothering this imbursement with alleged methods that stain and stoke that evermore extricate our ancestor from wonders one and all, the end. Then the final credits run with the life forms and we stray either from intimacy or the accident part emerges between miniature movement and application, austerity and surface, superposition and plain, O oh, river palms and clock face, stairwell and flagstone, Aspect of a method verily over landscape with gazebo adding Bethlehem rose or clump green wax warm layers of synthetic skin meat muddled anniversary involuntary bromide book bound to inlay the marriage of word paste and tooth pulled domina this minion font and fr frontage over putty in pages reproduced by lower quadrant anvil vertical bellows and antelope in upward red quick quick, the syllables to stagger, the enumerated forethought, as when cobalt woodwinds issue silver pearls. From overflow in the storehouse for distress, prodigal perfume, inscrutable smile, surface new assets to supervise before the next cessation. In 1994, 1996, British artist Melanie Smith turned to sites of exchange on the streets of downtown Mexico City. In a collecting practice restricted to the color orange, the artist scoured through a profusion of mass-produced synthetic objects sold in the casual marketplace composed of street vendors and local retailers. The artist bought these items en masse and assembled, and assembled the re resulting accruals into a an ultramix of wall sculptures and photographs into such environments as insinuated by the title that Melanie Smith gives this piece, Orange Lush. Smith upended any compulsory cause and effect link between modes of production and the activities of consumption, between sensual appeal and purchasing potential, or between social contract and the dislocated world economy. and plastic negativity after Melanie Smith. The things you purchase place coin from the blunt material of the world, a sight unseen of objects, inexhaustible, a space of dissembling depth where body mind and gadget crash and head on collision, the divide riven between state control and global capital, theater of useless appetites and credit in erratic rates whereby the problem is not one of debt per se, as people are led to suppose, the entire project relying after all on repeated deferral for its creativity and progress, blaring integers and agents always saying there will be things you cannot afford to live without, 
a sheer empire of orange, hence also of pink and black, in banners hoisted, lozenge, nombril, point, fess, to hail the spectacle of acquisition, as if to say your ability to buy is to be physically desirable, the improved alternative to who you are, an unsettled appetite and perversive anxiety, to obtain the wherewithal whose unqualified role of excess is a more systematic banality to suffer the unastounding nature of workaday life, of new models expected for growth in economic activity, as with the intent of looking at art, seeing as though you were rendered a potential consumer by the spewing sunshine psychedelic, the firing squad lined against the body of Praxis and apricot nail polished soles Kirshner and O'Keefe, but on the other hand, toward the idiom of its own manufacture, the precedence of advertising and early development where two boys, confronted with the dubious prospect of a cereal supposed to be good for you, will pass it on to their younger brother who hates everything so that all time and space of the world you inhabit waxes foreign in the hard sell aimed at corporate growth. Your sense of significance in the present use for product positioning via retrieval cues in the unyielding in the unyielding surface of personal memory and facts, a master of a time between or inside out, an expanse and contraction with the music of its referent leading to spontaneous brand awareness by way of image attribute and compliance, specimens rendered paralytic within the 15 second time spot as decided by arbiter agents based upon a point system that takes into account the factors of cosmetic aggression or control being defined as any perceived effect upon or alteration, including dents, gouges, holes, lost parts, and so forth, opposed to active su subjects, as opposed to being cornered into cultural poverty and emulsified wealth, between what is and what could be, such as whether or not the sponsors invest in the arm trade, support oppressive regimes, the world is your unoccupied ground, a series of questions about this rank abundance and utopian lore, whereby the majority goes without or aspires a modest share of sporting goods, the ubiquitous concatenation, concatenation of gimcrack trade and purchase and peddle, the seduction by which we are obviated in crassic polymer thermoplastic squadron where vendors wage battle against public officials of a right to downtown streets, the operating environment of a screen in relation to packaging and lifestyle as throwaway goods and teeming containers are to a severed hammerhead in the formaldehyde of television, Forms that pacify you in the new wilderness of acetate and vinyl clusters rhyming with the Apollo 9 white noise or the techno-phenyl dream of a weight-lifted anatomy in social excellence and juice bars of tangerine and high-octane Gulf War video flamboyance of so much reading matter in reference to proper names in the city of signage, illiteracy and things to buy in the strips of buildings and contaminated light. The cleft self no longer determined at the point of satisfying these, these elastic urges. The fat life caught between the hard edge of the old and the leisure promise of the new synchronized handling and forceful hum of the right stroke of sexual insolvency, polymer, polymer nerve ending and shudders of never enough to the cool pistols of breath along spent flesh when financial identity is rendered inviolate at last to the swell of dispossession, no weave or warmth to the colonized colors wave for a sham democracy, democracy's parasite standing. Afterlife, anniversary. <clears throat> Where on the morning, day in duplicate, was I without picture to recall, day in sequence, holy ghost the telephone, ignoring the news, knows not, yes, that would be fitting. Expedient, suitable, opportune. Voice that begins with short hello, strong note, telling the item it stands for, speech, trained to commit, ease, tension, state fact, curtail information with such gladness as to eclipse a surname, disembodied, mine. It's the same old ability to speak as ever to this person for whom acquisitive I exist alone in the privilege of my household, as are these images on the television, and a voice skilled to submit in brief abridgment its business. An example is this. Expandable for greater versatility and with different features to match in a portfolio free of risk. The key here, keep it compelling and to the point, creeping horror in real time of the unthinkable impact arriving in episodic bursts of chilling disbelief 
signified first by trembling floors, sharp eruptions, cracked windows, fireball through a building, actual unfathomable realization of the gaping flaming hole in the first of the tall towers, and then the same thing all over again in its twin for a hell mouth. As civility to breaking point, fasten to this other voice and spirals, listen closely to what I say. For either it is, yes, I am with you now, or no, the city disintegrating, revulsion somewhere, now everywhere, nowhere safe, and there in the picture is our talking. It cannot cease. It plummets also down the side of the South Tower in free fall, a caller for whom the merciless sight of bodies helplessly tumbling out, some of them in flames, an example is this. It should have been enough for us to find me without recourse to oppose, but it wasn't. It wants me there, strapped between another transaction and catastrophe, like voice, for whose sake, I who am nothing, like it without cease. An example is this. Say the kingdom and all its dust and debris, all the money guaranteed in cataclysm on television here together with me, our dividends in fourfold to enhance the here and after. As when the oldest star in the galaxy, verb phenomenon, my experiment in danger, I am the triumphal arc, marquee of a visible diminishing. Vanishing. Amulets that share in a kinship in the histories of light and language. When I unite the number nine to 27, the word tangerine to lemongrass, meadow spur to thistle, Glimmer to this day, you drive it fades, splinter duration evanescing, double life conjured by vocables from a zone of repetition, its glow at the origin, vision contingent at the level, level of the letter, all things abrupt now intermittent. Claims singular, never less than overstatement, when I slip into view out of joint with experience, when attributes of bliss and cataclysm reside not in portentous totality, but in the ordinary detail, a tension requisite for me to tell the narrative of sight and sound and transformation. Discrete words, a partial view. But even as I surface subject to predicate, at best a proposition, belated reason I am the cause of my thoughts, why in the domains of the ether, in the pharmacology of everyday matter, in the flattened contours, my singular life, a social statistic, is the charm not of narrative consequence, bestowed on me a script of action as to navigate the intangible space of so much undigested information. Rip in the web of meaning when I cast and draw. But owing to that gash, where to see is to know. Am I careful in my unwanted thought, in desires for such a gesture as to embolden, persuade, limberness, untangle the strict partitions without hazard to the shell protective of all persons provisional and settings that reflect. I cover a ground, I quicken, I substitute the vanishing with constituent parts, regenerate, deprived of a halo, released from this fixity. Am I not without radiance of my convenient forgetting and every day because it so beckons in the recurring custody of a world around whose mindfulness we congregate and over which we are inclined to argue. It was too quiet on the morning of January 3rd when I got up at 8 after a good night's sleep. Too quiet. I showered, dressed, then came downstairs and put some water on the boil for instant oatmeal. Peter always woke up very early. He would have been at work in his study but there was no sign of his having breakfasted. I looked out the window and saw the New York Times still on the dri driveway in its bright blue plastic wrapper. Had he gone for a walk? I checked to see if his slippers were on the floor by the window seat where he usually left them when he went out. They weren't there. Why? The water was boiling. I poured it over the cereal, stirred it, then stopped. The house was so still. I called his name. No answer. Was he sick or had he overslept? I remember thinking I shouldn't eat until I was sure he was all right. We had a running joke that at 70, anything might happen. So if one of us didn't appear in the morning by nine, 
The other should check. I called his name again. Again, no answer. Maybe he didn't hear me because he was taking a shower. I went into his room. He was lying in bed with his eyes closed. I knew when I saw him with the CPAP mask over his mouth and nose and heard the whooshing sound of air blowing air that he wasn't asleep. No. Starting from nothing with nothing when everything else has been said. Oh, my very dear child, a holy and good God has covered us with a dark cloud. On April 3rd, 1758, Sarah Edwards wrote this in a journal to her daughter, Esther Edwards Burr, when she heard of Jonathan's sudden death in Princeton. For Sarah, all works of God are a kind of language or voice to instruct us in things pertaining to calling and confusion. I love to read her husband's analogies, metaphors, and similes. For Jonathan and Sarah, all rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. So in general, there is always progress, as in the revolution of a wheel, and each soul comes upon the call of God in his word. I read words, but don't hear God in them. On the morning of January 2nd, we took the train into Manhattan to be part of my son's new wedding at City Hall. That afternoon, we couldn't find seats together on the crowded peak hour Metro North from Grand Central, so we sat apart. It was dark when we arrived at New Haven and crossed the track for the shoreline connection to Guilford. When we got off, I walked quickly across the parking lot to the car. He followed more slowly. I wondered why, but it was so cold I didn't bother to look back. At home, we cooked up some vegetables and pasta. After dinner, he said he was tired and would go straight to bed. Oh, that we may kiss the rod and lay our hands on our mouths. The Lord has done it. He has made me adore his goodness that we had him so long. But my God lives and he has my heart. We are all given to God and there I am and love to be. I admire the way thought contradicts feeling in Sarah's furiously calm letter. We can't be limited to just this anxious life. Somewhere I read that relations between sounds and objects, feelings and thoughts, develop by association. Language attaches to and envelops its reference without destroying or changing it, the way a cobweb catches a fly. Now putting bits of memory together, trying to pick out the good while doing away with the bad, I'm left with one overwhelming impression the unpresentable violence of a negative double. He was lying with his head on his arm the way I had often seen him lie asleep. I thought of Steerforth's drowned body in David Copperfield. Weird as I am, I did. <laughs> also of the brutality of sending young children away to boarding school in order to forge important ties for future life. Though Steerforth is a sadistic character, his perfect name forms a second skin. Something has to remain to rest a soul against stone. The CPAP mask was over his face because he had sleep apnea, a disorder characterized by pauses in breathing during sleep. When the mask is plugged in and running, pressure greater than the surrounding atmosphere is enough to keep the upper airways from becoming narrowed or blocked. If he felt anything unusual, surely he would have tried to remove the cumbersome thing. It was still running in place and fogged up. Land of darkness, or darkness itself, you shadow mouth. I've been reading some of Auden's The Sea in the Mirror. 
one beautiful sentence about the way we all reach and reach, but never touch. A skinny covering overspreads our bones, and our arms are thin wings. In an early morning, half-waking dream, you were lying in the bed beside me in a dark suit. I recently touched your black jacket, the one you loved we brought together on sale two years ago in Barney's. We were thinking about getting another this month because you had worn the original to pieces. It's in the closet now, an object for storage beside your ashes. Maybe the jacket was in my mind as distant dream knowledge of the way one figure can substitute for another with a cord attached. So what is false gives life to what is fair. I thought you were really you until I woke up back in myself. Esther, 1695 through 1766. Elizabeth, 1697 through 1733. Anne, 1699 through 1790. Mary, 1701 through 1776. Jonathan, 1703 through 1758. Eunice, 1705 through 1788. Abigail, 1707 through 1764. Jerusha, 1710 through 1729. Hannah, 1713 through 1773. Lucy, 1715 through 1736. Martha, 1718 through 1794. If your names are only written and no originals exist, do you have a real existence for us? What happens to names when time stops? Answer, nothing happens. There is no when. Jonathan Edwards was the only son among ten unusually tall sisters their minister father jokingly referred to as his 60 feet of daughters. <laughs> Esther Stoddard Edwards, also known for her height, taught her 11 children and others in Northampton in a school that consisted of a downstairs room in their farmhouse. Later they received the same education Timothy provided to local boys in his parish in East Windsor, Connecticut. The girls were tutored along with their brother, in some cases they tutored him, in theology, philosophy, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, history, grammar, and mathematics. All except Mary were sent to finishing school in Boston. All married late for that period. The Beinecke Library in New Haven owns a vast collection of Edwards family papers. It contains letters, diaries, notebooks, essays, and more than 1,200 sermons. But apart from a journal kept by Esther Edwards Burr, and a few letters to and from the sisters, daughters, and Sarah, all that remains of this 18th century family's impressive tradition of female learning are a bed sheet Esther Stoddard Edwards probably spun and embroidered herself, Sarah's wedding dress fragment, and several pages from Hannah Edwards Wetmore's private writings, along with posthumous excerpts uh, collected, and with collected and transcribed commentary by her daughter, Lucy Wetmore Whittlesey. The Connecticut Historical Society in Hartford owns a fragment of Mary Edwards' cruel embroidery and a pair of silk shoes worked by Miss Hannah Edwards, daughter of the Reverend Timothy Edwards, wife of Seth Wetmore Esquire of Middletown. Only tossing color coins into a well of language, while faces of magic contained in little stories outside the purview of philosophy Scramble to help each other. Quid pro quo. C. O. Milford, P. A., 1904. The way bleak north presents itself here as Heracliton error, driving and driving thought and austerity nearer to lyricism, often as black ice. I wrote this poem on a winter day in 1998 when my mother was still alive and I hadn't met Peter. 
I have been reading Xerox copies of the last journal pages from the microform edition of the manuscripts of Charles Sanders Peirce. If you take immediate environment into account, during the winter of 1904, things were threadbare for the putative father of pragmatism. No peace in projects, no firewood for warmth. A few crotchety word lists used as ornaments or phantom limbs. I remember the way the lines came to me suddenly after reading the journal, and how cold and quiet it seemed inside the room, with soft snow falling outside. Nietzsche says that for Heraclitus, all contradictions run into harmony, even if they are invisible to the human eye. Lyric is transparent, as hard to see as black or glare ice. The paved roadway underneath is our search for aesthetic truth. Poetry, false in the tricks of its music, draws harmony from necessity and random play. In this aggressive age of science, sound-colored secrets, unperceivable in themselves, can act as proof against our fear of emptiness. Sorrows have been passed, and unknown continents approached. General Manuscript 151, Box 24. Hannah Edwards, Diary Fragment. My dear children, what shall I say to you, or what shall I leave you? Fain would I do something while I live that may contribute to your real benefit and advantage. Our lives are all exceeding brittle and uncertain. The Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library, one of the largest buildings in the world devoted entirely to rare books and manuscripts, was constructed from Vermont marble and granite, bronze and glass during the early 1960s. The library's digital photography studio is located in a windowless room downstairs. Here are objects to be copied according to the state-of-the-art Northlight HID copy light system are prepared for reproduction. Each light is packed with 900 watts of ceramic discharge lamps and requires a typical 15 ampere 120 volt outlet. The lamps are doubly fan-cooled with one chamber for the hot lamp side and one fan for the electronic side. A diffusion screen spreads light evenly onto the copy board while protecting the art object or manuscript from heat. This can be replaced with white plexiglass for three-dimensional artwork. Black curtains surrounding the copy table protect the photographer's vision and at the same time protect light intensity from bleeding. One or two stuffed oblong cloth containers known in the trade as snakes hold the volume open. Facing pages are held down flat with transparent plastic strips. And when I was out of my head and thought myself sick and lost, or at a riverside and among strangers that would not direct me home, that's Hannah Edwards, remembering her delirium during an illness in 1736. Under the fan-cooled copy lights, she speaks to herself of the loneliness of being Narcissus. On the Shoreline Express, I like to sit on the side where between Stony Creek and Guilford, I can see my neighbor's house and in winter, a little further up the road, catch a split-second glimpse of ours through the window as the train passes. I suppose I'm trying to capture a moment before mirror vision, because when you view objects that lie in front of your eyes as well as others in the distance behind, what you see in the mirror has already been interpreted, so far as you can tell. More and more, I have the sense of being present at a point of absence where crossing centuries may prove to be like crossing languages, sound waves. It's the difference between one stillness and another stillness. 
Even the invisible scotch tape I recently used when composing frolic architecture leaves traces on paper when I run each original sheet through the Canon copier. I can't remember if there was snow on the ground, but I do remember the cold. If winter landscape meets the being of the subject of the soul now and before, and conveys what is yours to join the finished pastoral invention of others, that is rationalism's secret. I don't pretend to be saying God has promised any new grace concerning our scheme being brought to pass via parables of lost sheep. No, not the least shadow association, even in the realm of wishes. Art is a mystery, artifice its form. Hannah has taken off her embroidered shoes. She is dipping her bare feet in varieties of light. Returning home, after only a day or two away, I often have the sense of intruding on infinite and finite local evocations and wonder how things are in relation to how they appear. This sixth sense of another reality, even in simplest objects, is what poets set out to show, but cannot once and for all. If there is an afterlife, then we still might. If not, not. And it has an epigraph from Emerson's Divinity School Address, into the beautiful meteor of the snow, that this book is a history of a shadow that is a shadow of me mystically, one in another, 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 to subserve. Nent, nga, der, om, osh. In one, no sun, nor did the waxen, yet did the ear, the sucker man, and her arms alone all, though there the, uh, could trip, air was dark. Mm. All objects, wow, things strove. <coughs> In labored after an awakening was leaning, mm. body, my body slipping, mm. body, my body slipping, d down full toward its own secret. Sermon, 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 a missed sermon, rough sermon, and sermon of crap. Sent, oh, that I then be at rest, more sure, these are the was shadow ever, long shall, finding no, for they but find a bewildered ever. Weary of them had, that is first. Then was ever, for they ever had. Had the wings of a dove, but whether could I fly, oh, and abiding portion, and no wing, deceiving enjoyments, where shall I find real, oh, I wander from mountain, no. Oh, that I could find rest for the soul of them and weary myself. Walking just below my father's orchard after I, walking just below my father's orchard after I, religion and the concerns of my soul, my business, religion and the concerns of my soul, my business, straight for and labored after an awakening sense of Turn, I had taken that. After I had taken up many rest, concerns of my 
business. And after I had said to it, and prep of um, saints of my miserable, um, my miserable, <sighs> with a great deal of concern, sensible, I thought, oh, oh, and negligent, notwithstanding, in so old in, 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 in over the south fence, and notwithstanding to be sensible then now, what made me cast in my mind whether I had not, but I certainly was unable to. Oh, I was leaning. One chain of thought. I saw manner that was well, an image of it on my mind as what should. Uh, but I attempted to read, but out one chain intercepting and, and covering the I had as lively as and did not seem to be, had seen it abruptly, and so strong that it, I attempted to, 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 to look upon it as supernatural by a piece of Cicero of imagination, and that kept up I always hoped for. I seemed to be set at great concern with it. It then happened that the inhabitants were, and it seemed comfort, confusions of worldly Atha, mind in general, the melon, aught of the dangers I will fear I was not prepared, in small hand on tray, pencil, commonplace. Distemper, I was seized with it. Opening the house door, she stood hesitating whether she or whether set at great distance from this world. It then appeared to me a vain toilsome. The tents were strangely wandered, lost, and comfort to me that I was so separated to worldly affairs by my present affliction and Although melancholy was yet in a quiet frame, I was in. It was not without a deep prepared for death, and I did set myself to belong to nobody, field and etc. The alterations which to produce the voices of a vast number of beings in the mind and soon carried my ideas much into, be very much ravished with it, and sometimes, once, had scarce any definite ideas. I heard the look the around the Bible. Felt like a wave in the air, held there by the something delirious, and sometimes soft, yet I was pretty rational, and consulted with myself about, in my imagination only, a thought of, wrote and the Romans too. On the other hand, world, I used to be very, felt soft, or in a sort, really knew who or what I was, and thereby the music, ah, uh, and therefore lost, mm, I was, consulted with myself about it, Pursuing shadows and things, shadows and things that I know are effect silk codes would have on agents in the field. He answered that could hide behind the silk in common way. Or what shall I say to you? If for it to me that I was so separate, Tage, our lives are all exceeding brittle. Remember Lot's wife. something delirious and therefore lost. I was to a degree rational and consulted with myself about it and concluded it was in my 1379, 151, 1379, 1713, 1773, and, and indeed a sweetness and to loose. But as I grew well, I actually to concern myself with to seek a love union with an immortal, out to be Cynthia, a symbol of light and love. And in 
want to alternate with in the sclage stage object sculpt the chief happiness and perfect. What shall I leave to you, or what shall I say to you, as it were for the judgment of relations and connections of the imagination? Rivers by the law of most nations and by the natural is attributed to the proprieties of their banks, except as the Rhine or the Danube, which seem too large to follow to the property of the neighboring fields, yet even the considered as the property of that nation through which something while I live that may contribute bear them such a relation in the fancy which I made to land bordering upon rivers follow idioms provided it be made by what they call alluvian imperceptibly which are circumstances that assist conjunction considerable portion torn at once from one bank and becomes not his property whose land it falls on till it, until the trees and plants have spread their roots into thought does not and distinguish between the necessity of the separations, possession, and the rules which assign particular persons. The first necessity is obvious, strong, and in. I remember the summer before my sister Jerusha's death, making, and I was leaning over the south fence and thinking in this manner that I was never likely to do better, and where should I go, etc. 